God bless you. Listen, so many times nowadays we walk by sight. One of the reasons we're so depressed, so disturbed, until we decided to live by sight instead of by faith. I preached a sermon entitled, By Faith. Of course, we are people of faith and we must live by faith. We must walk by faith. And so I wanted to share this message with you, our audience. A sermon entitled, By Faith. Let's listen. When you read Genesis chapter 4, you run into Abel. When you read Genesis chapter 5, you run into Enoch. When you read Genesis chapter 6, you run into Noah. They're characterized the same way in the book of Hebrew. Because Hebrews chapter 11 verse 4 it says, by faith, Abel. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 5, it says, by faith, Enoch. And Hebrews 11, verse 7, it says, by faith, Noah. They all three bring to the table something that would be beneficial to all of us. When you see Abel in the Bible, he is worshiping God. When you see Enoch in the Bible, he is walking with God. When you see Noah in the Bible, he is working for God. Of course, we need all three. We surely need to worship the Lord. Worship is not just a friend's benefit. Worship is one of the commandments of God. God assigned and summons us to worship him. John 4, 23 said the hour cometh when true worshipers shall worship the Father. It means that the Father is looking forward to seeing us worship him for the Bible says the Father seeketh such to worship him. That means God the Father, he desire our worship. That means he get up every morning and visit our homes and he come to where we come to church and see if he can find someone that will worship him. You see, we worship him because of who he is. We praise him because of what he does. And you see, you don't even have to wait on him to do something for us just because he is who he is. We ought to worship him. He desired our worship and because God is our Father. Jesus Christ is our Savior. He not only desire our worship, he deserve our worship. Because of what his son did for us at a place called Calvary. But not only do he desire our worship, deserve our worship, but he demand our worship. Because John 4.24 says God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. Here's what God will do. If you don't look up on your own, God will just lay you on your back. And you will have no choice but to look up. So God expects us to worship him. But not only should we worship him, we should walk with him. Because when you walk with God, you can never remain the same. When you walk with God, that means you're going places. And if you're going places, you're going to leave some folk behind you. Talk to me, somebody. But when you walk with him, that means you're in good company. How can you be afraid if you're walking with Jesus? 
Because whenever you walk with him, number one, you have his presence. Second, you have his protection. Thirdly, you got his power. Then you have his purpose. And then you have his promise. That's if you walk with the Lord. Thank God for being able to walk with him. But Noah says, not only should you worship the Lord, not only should you walk with the Lord, you must work for the Lord. It's important that we spend some time working. Jesus says that in John 9 and 4. He said, I must work the works of him. And Jesus didn't say it was just a work. He says the work. There's a difference in a work and the work. You see, we work on the a work, we work for ourselves. But the work, we work for him. Because his work is steadfast. Because 1 Corinthians 15, 58 said, Be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounded in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Whenever you work for the Lord, we say there's going to be a payday, but there's already a payday. The fact that God let us work for him should be a plum pleasing pleasure. Because really, what I'm doing, God could get someone else to do it. You see, if I don't preach it out, he can get a jackass to preach for it. Talk to me, somebody. He don't have to have me. I mean, he can, he, can, he can put, for God so loved the world, in the clouds. And every time you see the clouds, you will say, for God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten son. He could put his word on a neon sign. Talk to me, somebody. He can let the birds sing it out. He can let the river row it out. He can let the wind blow it out. But thank God he uses us. Anybody here know it's a privilege to be used by God? God don't have to use any of us. Thank God he allow us to do a work for him. Talk to me somebody. That. I like it because he selects certain people that he can he can trust to do certain things for him if you have a moment i want you to go back to genesis chapter six and i want to walk through it and then we'll come back to our text because many times when we see characters in the bible we think that we're living in sin. now the bible does not give us a definition to faith the bible gives us a description to faith and the description is found in Hebrew 11 and 1. So you there? It said, now faith is the substance. The word substance is two English words knitted together. Sub and under. Or sub and stand. Sub, S-U-B. That means under the machine that run underneath the water is called a submarine. It's running under Second part of the word stands is where you get the word stand, something you stand upon. So what is faith? Faith is something under you that you can stand, help me say, stand upon. Matter of fact, that's, that's about all many of us can say we have is faith. Because everything else you try to hold on to seem to disappear. The Bible says that the just shall live by what? Faith. We got to live by faith. You can't see it, but it's real. Now, you see, sight says to us, show me, show me, and I'll believe. But faith said, believe, believe, and I'll show you. Because most of us think if you can't see it, it's not real. But the Bible said, if you can see it, it's not real. If you can't see it, then it's real. Talk to me, somebody. I know that's difficult to understand, but you see, first of all, the promise shall promise. There is the promise of faith. Now, faith is the substance of things. Hope for it is the evidence of things not seen by faith. That means Noah had faith in a second generation. He had faith. Well, God bless you. Listen, I want to pause just for a moment and say to you just a word about this faith matter. 
The Bible said without faith, it is impossible to please the Lord. It does not matter whatever else you do. If you don't trust God, you don't live by faith. Pistos is the Greek word for faith. It means put your trust, your total confidence in the Lord. That's the such thing as simple faith. Simple faith say that I walk in this building. I don't examine the chair where I'm sitting. I just drop right down on it, believing that the chair have enough strength to hold and secure me. That's simple faith. Then that's what you call saving faith. Saving faith said, I believe that Jesus died for my sins. His father raised him from the dead. I don't know much about the chemistry of the blood of the cross, but I do believe in the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. That's saving faith. And then that's what you call uh, supplying faith. Supplying faith said that I don't know how God is going to do it, but my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. We are people of faith. Stop being so concerned about economy, about things that's going on. I know we're interested in it, but the Bible says that David himself made the statement, I have been young, now I'm old. I have never seen the righteous forsaken or his seed begging for bread. Let's go back to the message. You see, first of all, the promise of faith. You see, secondly, the prompting of faith. Thirdly, you see the perspiration of faith. Here it is. Verse 7. By faith, Noah, being one of God, of things not yet seen, moved with fear. Here it is. Prepared an ark. The aunt didn't just show up. Noah had to prepare it. It took him a hundred and twenty years to build this ark. Now watch that. The ark, it was 450 feet long. It was 75 feet wide. It was 45 feet high. It was the size and a half of a football field. Can you imagine? Here is a brother building a boat and ain't no water nowhere. It had never rained before. There was no flood. Yet, he's building on the earth. But same time he's building, he has a hammer in one hand and a Bible in the other. <laughs> Preach Reverend Ray. He's building the ark. Same time he's telling Folk, it's going to rain. I hear a little boy go home and say, Daddy, I went by that place where that man built that big old boat. And he scared me because he said, it's going to rain. I don't know what that rain is, but it was frightening to hear. Dad, what you think about it? Your daddy said, hey, son, I'm, I'm laughing. <laughs> because... When I was a little boy, I went by and that same man scared me. Because he preached that same sermon, it's going to rain. <laughs> and read them laughing because my daddy went by. And that same old man was preaching that same sermon. See, yeah, ain't nothing to that. Don't, don't worry about it. Ain't, ain't no rain coming. Just go on and forget it. Every comedian that would get on the stage... His jokes was on Noah. Because nobody believed it. Here is a man building a huge boat. Talking about it's going to rain. And ain't no rain shows up. Because he didn't have nothing to go on. Talk to me somebody. Do you know that many times when you tell people to get their house in order, it's a joke. I don't think y'all like me in this house. 
Because folks are, oh, man, everybody else doing whatever they want to do. You ain't got you ain't got to be all that religious and holy. I, I go to church, but I go as a social. I just go if I feel like going, if I want to go. If I don't, I don't worry about it. But can I tell you, if the Bible says it, it's going to happen. <laughs> Y'all don't hear me this. If the Bible says it's going to happen, it's going to happen, he prepared the art. Can I tell you how he prepared it? He prepared the art by putting one door there and one window. Now God operated the door. Noah operated the window. When he built the art, the Bible says he pitched it within. He pitched it without. Pitch is a form of tar, but it comes from the Hebrew word meaning atonement. Atonement means at one mid. That meant you see the water from the flood represented the wrath of God. But when he pitched the tent, that meant that the uh, Water couldn't get inside of the boat. Are, are y'all still here? It meant that the water couldn't get. It's symbolic to the blood of Jesus. That when I'm saved, the Lord, he seals me with his blood so that the wrath of the Father can't get in to damage my soul. Am I putting y'all to sleep in this house? He pitched it. Now watch this. When he built the ark, it wasn't made, really wasn't made like a boat. It was made like a coffin. Because it actually represented the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. It actually represented the security of the believer. Because when Noah finished, God gave the invitation. Because listen to what God said. Come thou into the ark. Now if God said come, you know what that means? He's already in there. <laughs> I ought to have two witnesses. Now if he had said go, it meant he was telling us to go in the opposite direction. But he said come, shout come one time. He said come thou and all your house into the ark. The Lord give the invitation and once they all got into the Bible said, God shut the door. <laughs> God controlled the door. And then there was one wonder. The window was up. <laughs> Can I tell you what that means? That means while it was in the ark. Noah and his family didn't have but one way to look. That was look up. <laughs> she got too many folk. You looking down. <laughs> I don't care what you encountering in life. Stop looking down. You gotta keep looking. Somebody ought to help me. Say, preacher, you don't know what I'm going through. No, I don't know what you're going through. But whatever you're going through, you can get better results if you look up. And you know what I discovered? That art had to be a stinky place. Because it had two of every kind of animal. Two elephants. Two giraffes. Two skunks. Two chimpanzees. Two tigers. Talk to me something. Two of every kind in the ark. And they didn't have nowhere to go. Whatever they had to do, they had to do it in the ark. And I know it got real stinky in there, but nobody tried to get out. Because it smelled bad, because the conditions weren't right. Talk to me, somebody. And I know somebody fell while they was in there. But you know what they did? They didn't fall out. They fell in there. And whenever you're in the body of Christ, you may fall. But you're not going to fall out. 
You're going to fall in. Dwell. A witness. I won't hold you much longer. They all in the ark. Thank God for security. Now, the thing I like about it is because this ark symbolizes the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. The Bible said the ark landed on April the 14th. You know what April 14th is in the Bible? It is the day of the Passover. That's the same day that Jesus died. Talk to me somebody. On the 17th is the day he got up. The text said it was on the 17th. Am I right in this house? That the ark rested symbolizing the security of the believer. Well, God bless you. We are out of time, but certainly not out of message. I hope and pray that you have been blessed by listening to just a portion of this sermon. I know you want to get this as another collective item and have it in your library that you can share it with your family, your friends, and well wishes. Send it off to somebody for Christmas gift. You can get this message. It will be a blessing for somebody in your family, in your household. You can get this message. Our announcer will tell you how you can reach us and get the message and many other messages. We're located at 2237 South Parkway East, right in the heart of Memphis, Tennessee. And I'd love for you to come and be with us, be our special guest any Sunday of the year. Come be with us on Tuesday night in our Bible study. We'd love to see you. Remember... God is good. That's right. All the time. The Bible said he prepared us for the saving of his house. To have a witness, somebody said, well, preacher, what can I do to have the same kind of faith? I know you want it. Help me say I want it. Yeah, number one, if you're going to have this kind of faith, number one, you must be saturated with the word. Shout saturated with the word. In other words, I don't get faith by just sitting around hoping I have it. I'm not going to be a man of faith just by sitting down praying for more faith. I must be soaked in the word of God. Because Romans 10, 17 said, faith come by hearing. Hearing come through by the word of God. So if I'm going to have faith, I'm going to spend some time, yeah, in the word. Time that I want to spend myself watching soap operas and watching ball games and sitting around Cutting the food. If I'm going to be a man of faith, I've got to spend some time in the Word. Because when I get down in the Word, my faith muscles will grow stronger and stronger. Y'all hear me, don't you? Thank God for having faith. Because when you know who God is, when you know what God is capable of doing. When you know the power that God possesses, you can too boast about having faith in God. You heard me tell you this one time that a man went down in his basement one day. Yeah, he was hammering on stuff. Didn't have a light on down there. The light was on on the upper floor, he kept hammering until he woke his little daughter up. The daughter came to the mouth of the basement, looked down and said, Daddy, is that you down there? The father said, yes, it's me, baby. She said, well, Daddy, can I come down to where you are? Daddy said, come on. She took a step and she backed up. She said, Daddy, I can't see you. 
The father said, that's all right, baby. Come on, daddy can see you. She started to step again. She banged up. She said, but daddy, I'm scared. Daddy said, don't worry about it, baby. Come on. Yeah, daddy's looking at you all the time. She started to step. She banged up again. She said, but daddy, I'm afraid I might fall. The father said, wait a minute, baby. So let me ask you a couple of questions. So number one, do you recognize my voice? She said, yeah, daddy, I recognize your voice. So let me ask you something else. Have your daddy ever lied to you? I said, no, daddy, you ain't never lied to me. So let me ask you one more question. Then if you fall, do you believe your father has enough strength to catch you when you fall? I said, yeah, daddy, I know you got enough strength to catch me. He said, all right, if you recognize my voice and know that I've never lied to you and know that if you fall, I have enough strength to catch you when you fall, come on down. Don't have a witness hand. I'm talking to somebody in here listening to me right now. You got to make a faith move, but you're scared. Don't have a witness hand. You want to do something spectacular, but you're scared to do it. I hear you saying, I don't want to do it because I might fall. I don't want to do it because ain't nobody else ever done it before. But I need to ask you two or three questions. Number one, can you recognize the voice of your father? Do I have a witness here? Number two, have God ever lied to you? Number three, do you believe that if you fall, that God is able to catch you in your fall? Just shake one hand, say, Amen. Can I encourage you this morning to tell you my. To order your copy of today's message on CD, DVD, or cassette, visit our website at GodIsGoodMinistries.net or by calling 1-800-375-4007 or you may write us at 2237 South Parkway East, Memphis, Tennessee, 38114. Oh, God is good.